Hey there, what's going on everyone and welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today I have a very special video for you guys. We are going to be doing a full toolbox tour and walkthrough of all the tools that I've accumulated after years of working on BMWs, both at shops as well as here at the Beamer Barn. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. And if you enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like or a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I am spoiled enough to have two boxes here, both of them completely full of tools, I guarantee it. And we also have overflow on the racks here. But we're gonna start with the first box that I ever bought, and this is a Harbor Freight Special here. I think it's like 150 bucks, and they come in a lot of different colors now. So I'll put a link to this in the description below, along with all the tools that we're gonna be looking at today. But we're gonna start with the top of the toolbox here, which has my first toolkit. This was actually a gift from my dad. It's a Craftsman, I believe, something like a 200 or yeah 230 piece kit and it essentially had everything that i needed when i started working on cars back when i was a kid still at my parents house it's got everything from the quarter inch drive to three eighths inch drive to half inch drive all of the ratchets that you need and i think i actually lost the small one quarter inch drive ratchet right there also some bits so tons of things that i found useful when i started working on euro cars it's got like the left side here metric and the right side is standard but again this was completely necessary when i started working on cars and i would recommend that you get a starting kit like this because it'll really just give you everything that you need to begin with and when i lose something i typically buy the replacement socket you'll see like this one doesn't match the rest but it is because I lost it and then I had it replaced. Same thing with my 10 millimeter right here. You can see it's a lot newer looking than the rest of them. So just something to start with guys when you're starting your tool lineup is get like a generic full kit and then move outwards from there because that way you're not just buying all the tools that you think you'll need at once when really you might not need half of what you know you could get from like a big box kit or something that's like a thousand dollars so this is a really great starting point now over here i have all the ratchets that i use this is a half inch dry with a flex head i really like having flex head ratchets this is a three eighths inch drive and it's by gear wrench and then same thing with my quarter inch drive here i really recommend spending good money on the ratchets because that way they're going to last a really long time these two right here are my harbor freight specials and i do use these quite a bit because they're just kind of a interesting design although i don't say that i would really like rely on them usually my favorite three eighths to use is this one right here because it's really long so you don't have to put a lot of torque on things now on the sides of the toolbox here it's got really great storage for having flatheads and drivers and stuff like that so i like to put my flatheads over here on the right side and over here i've got these screwdrivers and i went with a brand called weha over here i have some pry bars and a trim puller and those i keep easily accessible because obviously you're going to use them a lot now up here i do have a little magnet bar which is really cool and i have some quarter inch driver bit drivers i guess whatever you call these things these are great when you're in tight spots and let's say you have like a a uh, flat head or you could put like a t20 or something on here and just go at it in a really tight angle so that's what i would recommend that you guys have you don't need it all the time but when you do need it it's nice to have it and one other thing that i like to have is a telescoping magnet tool definitely a must have and i'll put a link to these in the description below i usually buy a few of them at the same time because you do tend to lose them. Don't ask me where, guys. I have no clue where these things go when you lose them. Oh, and last thing too is gonna be these work lights I use. They actually come in packs of twos, which is great. I'll charge one while I'm using the other, and they have like three different modes, high, medium, and then a little pointy light here. So really handy to have along with, I think this is my Nightcore light, which is a really, really bright spotlight. And it's actually like what I believe a lot of like police force and military would use and stuff is like something like this. I've dropped this plenty of times. You see it's got plenty of wear on there. So definitely have a nice bright light like this. Although I'll admit that the battery life does not last as long when you've got it on the brightest mode. So something to keep in mind. 
So now we'll look at the first drawer of tools and I like to put my pliers in this drawer. So I've got one set, I think from Pittsburgh. So Harbor Freight Special on these red pliers here and they have a full set matching handles and stuff. So it's a great starting point. You really don't need much beyond that. Although I do have these dual action pliers and I'll pull a link to these in the description below. These have like a little mechanism in the middle. So you squeeze and it actually doubles the force that goes to the pliers on the end here. You could see how much more movement you have to make in order just to open the tips a little bit. So I'll put a link to these. These are cool because they have a lot of squeezing force. Um, and then we have like wire snippers and vice grips. So all things that, you know, you generally want to have in your toolbox. Right here is my long or specialty sockets drawer. So I've got all my 3 8 sockets. These are all Pittsburgh. I believe that these are all Pittsburgh as well. These are all e-torque sockets. And then these are regular Torx sockets or dry Torx driver sockets, whatever you want to call them. Have a full set there. And then we have a full set of Allen driver sockets and a full set of large, well, not a full set, just an extra large set for like diff drains and transmission plugs and stuff like that. Then I've got two spark plug sockets, one for regular spark plugs, one for like N54 spark plugs and such, and then all of my extensions here. So three eighths and one quarter and half inch. All the extensions I like to use are in this drawer right here. Now this drawer has more specific equipment. So I've got like a viewing magnet, so you can see in awkward places, a set of Torx drivers. I think the like one or two pick sets here. So all different sorts of shapes and sizes for disengaging clips and stuff like that, really handy. Then I've got my extensions, my adapters. And what I really recommend you guys grab is some nice wobble extensions. These are by Aries, really nice quality. They come in a set of three, so you get the quarter inch, the three eighths and then the half inch as well. These are really nice for getting things in awkward positions. Uh, this style of extension swivel doesn't really work as well, I find, especially with like impacts and stuff, but these work really good with an impact. And then last thing in this organizer bin is these pens and pencils I have for marking things. Uh, keep in mind, this organizer bin, I love using these. I get these at Harbor Freight. I think they're like two or three bucks for one, and you can cut them to size to fit inside your drawer, but they make it really handy to organize things. Now this is my wrench and half inch socket drawer. So I've got like adjustable pliers here in a few different sizes. I've got my oversized wrenches. So 27 millimeters, 25. So those are for like extra large size nuts on certain suspension applications. And then I have a full set of Pittsburgh. That's right, Harbor Freight brand wrenches. I've had these for, man, three, four years now. Uh, and they've lasted a long time, worked on a lot of cars. So I would recommend. I have some long picks here. These are for those really, really awkward situations. I have some uh, Allen drivers and Torx and metric or what, this is standard right here. So this is metric. And uh, these I got from Harbor Freight. They're nice if you just don't know what something is size and you just wanna like figure it out really quickly. Random junk in here. Well, I can't say random. This is a mini wrench set. So this is for like six millimeter and below or like seven millimeter and below. Things that, you know, you really wouldn't find normally, but something like a normal wrench kit is gonna have just down to eight. So definitely not something you're always gonna need, but when you do need it, you're gonna end up buying a set, I guarantee you. And then if you're wondering which sockets I went with here, these are the Tecton. I believe they're the cold steel. So they're made for impact. They have a lot of weight behind them and they go all the way up to 24. So this is a really large kit in the metric size from 10 all the way to 24. And just really necessary if you're gonna be using an impact gun when you're working with like suspension, uh, you know, wheels, stuff like that, getting big bolts off. So Tecton has really nice sockets and tools overall. So I'd really recommend them or Gear Wrench, Milwaukee, all those brands I love really dearly. And then the last drawer that we have here, is gonna be just some more awkward items. So I've got like a knife sharpener, O2 sensor socket, some extra old parts, uh, like a generic charger, which is just something that I noticed that I needed certain situations when you lose like the charger for something. So it's got like 
all these different ports and it's got, I think, adjustable voltage as well. So something to have on the side there. Um, this is a belt installer tool for like N62s. So they have like an AC compressor that doesn't use a belt tensioner. So you have to use this nifty tool here to hold the belt on while you manually rotate the crank of the motor and it slips the belt onto that compressor. So kind of a weird tool, pretty difficult to do. This is a brake caliper compressor tool. So like some of the Volkswagens, they have like a piston that rotates. So you would put this into the piston and these little dowels here, they would lock into that piston and you would spin it and then it would compress the piston so you could get the caliper, you know, released off of the car, install new brakes, stuff like that. And as you can see, there's a few sides to this cube here. So there's a few different calipers and applications that it works on. The rest of the stuff in here is mainly just junk, old bolts, hardware, emblems and stuff. I do have a torque angle gauge and then some extra razor blades to replace in my exacto knives. And I'll put a link to the knives that I use. These I use for opening packages and stuff like that. And the blades are dirt cheap to buy as replacements. I've never had to buy another box. So I would buy these, link in the description below. Now here on the bottom, I have just a bunch of random junk. Uh, the only thing I think worth mentioning here is gonna be my automotive stethoscope or whatever you call this. And I'll try to put a link to this in the description below, but it's just a normal stethoscope, except it has like a rod at the end here. And the rod you're able to touch to like a motor or a suspension bit and see if that is the source of the noise. And it really, really amplifies the sound going into your ears. So I'd be careful about putting it on a motor because it'll be really loud. But I use this thing all the time, really a key to diagnosing certain noises on your car. And on the side of my box here, I do keep a couple of hammers, a sledge, and then a dead blow hammer. And the dead blow is a really nice tool to have. It helps you break things loose, especially when you have like a wrench on it or something like that. And the toolbox has, has a little place to put them along with a little bit of storage on the side here. And I just have some like old tools, old sockets in there, just more junk. But yeah, this is a real nice beginner's box here. I would recommend it if you haven't gotten your first box yet and they do come in a lot of different colors from Harbor Freight. But with that being said, there's this beautiful Milwaukee box right next to it. This comes in at around five, $600. And this I bought later in my career when I was working at a BMW shop because I just ran out of room putting tools all up in this box here. So it was nice to have a second box to spread things out into and then eventually fill up with even more tools. It does have great storage on the side here as well as a full power outlet so you can charge USB as well as 120 volts like AC plugs. So I've got all my batteries charging here constantly like my camera batteries as well as like my Milwaukee batteries and then you know phone charger, laptop charger, all that stuff. On the top here, I do have a Harbor Freight vise bolted down into this top, and the top is actually fully reversible. I have reversed it once before, so the bottom here is already dirty, and the top is as well. But I was thinking maybe one day, maybe making a custom metal plate, like a cover for this, and that way we'd have like a metalwork surface with a wooden core, but that's just a future project that I have in mind. It works great for now. I really love this design. And also a cool thing about this box is these half drawers at the top here. So you can kind of see and reach in. You don't have to open the drawer fully to get stuff that's in there. So I'm usually like throwing keys or old car parts in here until I need to get to them later, but it's a really good design. So in this drawer here, I have some wheel stud alignment pins, and this is a full kit for all different sizes. Trust me, when you work on a ton of different cars, you end up needing all the different sizes. And there's two of each, so it makes it really safe when you're pulling off expensive wheels. Then I've got a gear wrench pick set, some small picks and large ones. The large ones are really a key part of that kit because when you need to like break apart clamps and stuff, you can really get leverage with those. And then I, look, I have another Harbor Freight organizer with some old parts, some batteries and sensors, safety glasses for when I need them, and some sunglasses and an OBD diagnostic port. Just kind of random stuff in this top drawer here. And in this one, um, I have like some thin wall sockets from Tecton for those weird scenarios where you need thin wall 
Then I have some swivel sockets. These are really cool because uh, they're really strong and, and short. They can get into those weird areas. And then right next to that, we have some wheel sockets and alignment pins. I think those are just some old ones. Over here, we have some oil filter sockets. So like something like the 36 millimeter that you would need on an M54 oil filter to remove it. These come in handy. And then a socket set for Allen keys in a ton of different sizes. These are by Capri, another one of my favorite brands and I'll put a link to them in the description below. Really, really nice sockets, really good quality. And then up in the front here, just more trinkets, a generic set of like Harbor Freight hardware for just when you need to grab something quickly, crush washers, a uh, pill bottle, which is something that I used once before for like storing some shims. So just have that there in case I need to put something small in storage. Lighter zip ties, just more random bits. So now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this box. And trust me, I have a lot of cool goodies inside of here. So in my big drawer here, I have some of my biggest tools, of course. I guess that would make the most sense. Starting on the left here, I've got a punch kit. These are great just for uh, chiseling things out, you know, broken studs, bolts, stuff like that. Uh, masking tape, which I use all the time to, you know, mark things off or uh, keep things together, like tools and such. Some anti seize. Uh, something I use a ton is these INPA cables. I'll put a link to them in the description below. One of them, I had to, what is it? I had to solder it. I soldered on here, I bridged pins seven and eight to make it work with newer cars. And then I went and bought this cable, which is switchable and it can work with the older BMWs and the newer ones as well. So I'll put a link to this one in the description below because you might as well buy the right one the first time, unlike me. Right here, I have a brush kit. This I use to do my walnut blastings on the N54. You've seen me use it a couple times. Over here, I have an iCarsoft scanner. I also have a Foxwell scanner I like to use. Both of them work pretty well. The iCarsoft, uh, kind of a little funny sometimes, doesn't work all the time. I have some fishing line here, and you're probably wondering, I don't go fishing at all, but I do like to use this when I'm removing a spoiler. You've probably seen me use it before, but it's a real key tool to have. You just wrap a little bit around your hands, and then you can pull it right underneath a spoiler, and it removes all that adhesive. Right here's an adapter for the uh, circular ports on some of the older BMWs. Right here is a oil filter socket. I think this one's for N54, and this one is for Volkswagen and Porsche. And then right in front of it, I have a digital gauge for torque for half inch. This one's by AC Delco. Uh, pretty cool tool to have, you know, all you do is you put it like on an extension, like a breaker, and you can measure the torque and actually set a torque and it has like a auditory click instead of like a physical one like you get from like a torque wrench. So this is a cool tool to have, uh, especially if you wanna like measure the torque of something uh, when you're taking it off. So that's a pretty cool feature of it. Uh, right here, this pink thing right here, this is to jimmy a door lock. So you would like use one of those air compressor bags to get a door open and then you'd use this to poke the door and get the lock opened or maybe like the, the handle undone to get into a car. Uh, these, they're for locksmiths, I think. You can probably get them yourselves, um, but I've heard that you're not supposed to like keep these on your person because it's actually like illegal to have one in your car or something like that. So be very careful with these tools if they're you know really only meant for locksmiths. Now at the back here, some of my hidden stuff, I've got a pack of extra large zip ties. Real nice to have those. I have my exhaust cutter tool right here. You saw us use that recently. I have a large, I have a large pair of pliers. These are really nice uh, for a ton of different reasons. Compressing calipers, grabbing extra large nuts. And then right here is a uh, compressor tool. This is for those uh, hose clamps that you typically find like on a Porsche or on a Volkswagen. These two, you know, fingers here, they grab the clamp and squeeze it and work to get the hose clamp off in basically any direction. That way you're not like using pliers. So those are really nice to have as well. And then right down here, a ton of miscellaneous tools organized by my Harbor Freight special organizer. Uh, we'll start on the right here, have some random brushes, uh, zip ties. This is an oil filter socket kit for like all sorts of oil filters. I think I used this on like my Dodge last time. Uh, here's something I recommend you guys have. I've actually 
shown you before. This is for removing uh, window wiper arms and it's kind of like a cool tool because it works for a lot of different sizes and applications. Uh, it kind of looks like a battery terminal puller tool. I think maybe that's what some people call it too. But yeah, I'd recommend you have one of these in case you ever need to like replace a cowl or get something underneath a cowl and then you realize you need to pull the wipers off. Really easy tool to use. Uh, right here is an oil filter wrench tool. This is like a uh, set of pliers just for oil filters. Works really good, but it does kind of destroy the filter as you remove it. So uh, make sure that you have a new one when you're working on like a Japanese car or something like that. My, uh, I think my truck uses the same thing too. And then right here, a uh, little scope mirror that I like to use. Of course, every mirror that I look in breaks. Is that like supposed to mean something guys? And then also down here, I have like the clutch fan tool for BMWs. So, you know, the locking one right here. And then, oh, I think we missed this one. This is a one-time use hose clamp pincher. So this is what you would use to uh, close one of those clamps that like BMWs use. Uh, so I like to use worm clamps more than like the one-time use ones, but hey, it comes in handy in case you're gonna be doing jobs where the parts come with those one-time use clamps. So that is drawer number one. And trust me, it gets much, much thicker as we go. So in this medium-sized drawer here, I have all of my flex head ratchets. These are by Tecton. And if you're gonna buy some ratcheting wrenches, and I really recommend you spend that extra money and go with the flex head ones, cause it's gonna make it super easy to get all sorts of bolts and nuts and stuff like that in different places. So I have a full set here of the metric ones, like I said, by Tecton, really key. Again, more organizers from Harbor Freight. You'll see that as a theme in all my boxes. Uh, here are some scraping tools and on one end they have a metal razor blade and on the other end they have a plastic razor blade and it actually came with a ton of plastic razor blades. You can see the orange in there. So I bought these off of Amazon. I'll put them in, in the link description below, but they're great for removing stickers, adhesives and stuff like that uh, off of glass. And you know, the plastic blade is great for like, uh, you know, things that need to be softer and all that, but I guess you get the deal. Uh, here are some bits and this is where we kind of get into like the bits and um, uh, drill bits and stuff like that from, you know, drivers for tools, uh, some scraping wheels, a uh, rubber wheel for getting sticker residue off and like uh, spoiler adhesive, uh, OBD port, some ratcheting Torx wrenches. And these, you know, I don't use them all the time, but I did need one once and I figured, all right, I'm gonna buy a set and uh, hey, they come in handy sometimes. Um, you know, so especially just in like different type places where like, let's say like between an engine and a firewall, uh, you can't get like a full socket on something. So something like this is really good to get on those Torx bolts and uh, loosen them up. Um, but here are some wooden bits I have by DeWalt. Here are some cobalt bits by Bosch, by Bosch. Here are some cobalt bits by Bosch. These are really nice going through metal. This is a extractor set. I hate using that. I don't even want to look at it. But besides just these drill bit sets, I think I do have another one. Yeah, another DeWalt cobalt bit set. Um, along with a ton of pilot screws. I think I showed you guys in that video recently. It's nice to just get the pilot screws um, in a set of like 10 or 12 because you get them for a lot cheaper than when you buy them individually or in a kit. Um, so in this second drawer here kind of continues the theme. Uh, this is an impact driver, kind of a weird tool to use, although I've probably used it like uh, four times, which you know, kind of says how weird it is. Basically, it's got like a half, I think it's a half inch right here. And it's like an impact, but for your hand. And you can like hit the back here with like your hand or, you know, like a rubber mallet or a hammer. And what it does is when you go down on it, it like has a motion of, of twisting this, you know, ratchet right here. And it twists it in, a, in like a loose direction or a tight direction. Um, and so that you would use that to like break loose uh, bolts or nuts and stuff. And it comes with this little adapter here. So you can put like a flat head and I used it on a flat head application before and uh, obviously broke it. Same thing I think on this one. So uh, yeah, I don't recall the last time I did use it, but it's good to have in the back of the box. Right here is a triple square socket set and I have it labeled as Porsche cause I only really need to use this on Porsches or you know, sometimes on Volkswagens and stuff. 
Uh, but this kit is by Capri again, and they make great sockets and all different sorts of you know specialty applications. So I'll put a link to those down below. We have some snap ring pliers. We have a uh, plastic, what is this? What do they call it? Like a plastic rivet gun right here. So I bought that from uh, Harbor Freight, I think, and use that for like the fender liners, you know, cause they have like those plastic rivets on this side. Uh, here is a security bit set. This is something that you don't think that you need until you need it. But things like these Torx bits that have like a hole in them, those are like security bits, um, you know, things like the Allen keys with a hole in them or like uh, a four sided, you know, bit here. The, the kind of stuff that like you just don't usually see. Uh, but I think I got it at Harbor Freight because I just like really, really needed it once. Um, either Harbor Freight or Amazon. I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, here's a pin removal kit from Amazon. Great for removing pins out of like specialty BMW connectors. Here's a helicoil kit. Uh, use one of these before the M7, actually on the M5 motor. Um, so pretty cool experience using that, although really don't want to use that in, much in the future. Uh, here's a pass-through socket set, which is uh, just you know something you're going to need if you're going to be working on suspension that has um, like PASM for Porsche or uh, for like, you know, adjustable shocks, you know, the ones that have like a button for the uh, stiffness, but they usually have like a wire that comes out of the suspension rod. And that's why you have to have a pass through socket set that can go around that wire. So that's really nice to have for suspension. This is a, uh, like another chisel set, I think. So I think I use this mainly for like Brembo brakes, you know, cause they have like a dowel that goes through and alignment dowel for the brake pads. So you have to punch those out. So this is what I use for that. And I think that is all we have for these two, uh, these two drawers here. So now we just have this big mess of a drawer and this one is gonna be fun to go through. So let's go ahead and start on the left side here. So here's one of those tools that I hate to pull out and it is a Pittsburgh compression test kit. Obviously, you know, the first time you rent it, the second time just makes more sense to buy. And uh, this one comes with all sorts of fittings to go on different motors. I've used this on a lot of motors, just typically testing them when you buy a new car, just wanna make sure that you got good compression on the motor. And luckily most of the cars that I do buy, or should I say all the cars, <laughs> they do have good compression. Uh, here's a torque wrench. This one is by Tecton. And I believe this is the half inch drive. So this is great for like uh, doing some engine assembly or torquing down your wheels, stuff like that, you know, high torque with a half inch drive on there. And then right in front of it, we have a quarter inch drive. So I don't have a three eighths drive, although I think I might end up getting one eventually. And this one is again for like engine assembly stuff, really precise, low torque values for like smaller nuts and bolts. Put these out of the way for now. Now right here at the bottom, we do have a Hair dryer, just kidding, it's a heat gun. Uh, something like this you would use for like removing, you know, body panels, glue, stuff like that, heating something up. You know, for me, I, I like to use it, removing like spoilers, stuff like that when you need to apply some heat on there. Here's some gloves, which, you know, obviously these became a commodity after the uh, pandemic. Uh, here is a brake line bubbler kit. So I needed this when I made custom brake lines for the Hydro on my uh, E36 race car including this tool here. This is a brake line cutter, or I should say a pipe cutter, but it's small enough to use on brake lines. Um, just these, these simple tools that, you know, you buy because you need them once, but you know, you end up keeping, because why would you throw it away? Obviously, maybe we'll do another hydro on another car in the future, who knows? Uh, I also have a, a hot glue gun just uh, from doing arts and crafts, you know, <laughs> but no, really for just simple things that needed glue, uh, don't really use it a lot, honestly. But you see here that I have an angle grinder along with angle grinder wheels. I got this one at Harbor Freight, you know, nice and cheap, kind of a you know spur of the moment purchase because I needed it and it's never really failed me since then. Uh, so a ton of different wheels, cutoff wheels, grinder wheels, uh, something like a flap wheel for grinding things down. And then right here we have a divider in this drawer. So I've got more things. I think this is a metric tap kit, a tap and die. So rethreading things and uh, you know, things that, again, one of those tools that you don't wanna be uh, using all the time. 
This is my extra bag of Milwaukee accessories, just like charger battery, whatever stuff for the guns. Um, and this is a bag for the iCarsoft, obviously. This is a pump for, you know, using to pump fluids, like let's say into a differential or a transmission from like little bottles. And then I have a bunch of, uh, like this is like weather stripping for like my wide body kit that I never used, an old mass sensor, and then like bungee cords and a riveting tool, riveting, isn't it? Uh, but like a riveting tool for the wide body install on my uh, hatchback, which again, I haven't used that tool since then, but the day that we have to install another wide body, at least we'll have the right tools to do so. I'll go ahead and put all this back, close this up, and then we'll move into the last section of our box here, getting near the end, but all the small stuff. So here I have, a very messy drawer, and this is gonna be all the glues and tapes that I like to use. So double-sided tape, thread sealant, uh, epoxies, whatever kind of tape this tape is, uh, electrical tape, gasket, RTV, water weld, super glue, just all sorts of things to glue and tape things together when you need to fix something in that fashion. Uh, then right here I have my kind of prep painting drawer so i've got like sandpaper and like scuff pads for like when we're doing painting work you know some stuff that i, I really enjoy doing honestly I, I like that paint work right here we have a bigger snap ring plier kit uh, with a few different attachments here only use this a few times uh, but for those bigger snap rings like for doing bearings and stuff definitely need to have some stuff like that and then i have my analog caliper and this is uh, really nice for measuring, you know, things and it never needs a battery, which is really cool. And it can also be calibrated via, you know, one of the dials here. So I really recommend having like a caliper if you're going to be doing a lot of designing, measuring, uh, custom stuff, just, you know, something that a car mechanic probably should have. Right here, I have my drawer full of uh, more like miscellaneous kits, hose clamps and uh, trim tools, really, that's all it is. And then down here, I have my full electrical and Dremel drawer. So uh, I have some heat shrink here, some Dremel bits, some more heat shrink, and then my Dremel kit. This is definitely one of my favorite tools for building things, cutting things, destroying, building, all that. Um, definitely recommend you guys have one of these in, and I'll put a link to this one in the description below. It's done a really good job. Dremel is kind of the original brand, I think, when it comes to rotary tools, and uh, they have great support for their brand and great longevity as well. Uh, then the rest of the stuff in here is gonna be like splicing connectors and just more electrical items. We have those electric solder seal connectors, which I found and really love using. Automotive grade wire, I'll put a link to this in the description below, but I use this in a ton of different applications and it's automotive grade because it's resistant to more heat because of the insulation, of course. Um, more wire, some fuses, you know, for when you pop a fuse and you know, you're missing a fuse maybe. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a power probe and you use this to check if something has power or ground and you can also apply a power or ground to any wire or signal or anything like that. And uh, it comes with all these accessories here. Works really great for electrical diagnostics guys. And if you're not super well versed in electronics, then uh, you know, getting something like this might help you at least understand more because it helps you just diagnose things with a little more clarity. Um, right here, I have my multimeter. This is kind of just a basic one. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Uh, here is a little box that I have full of uh, like my soldering iron. We'll open it up really quick. Soldering iron, I have like paste and flux and all that stuff at the bottom there. And then I have a totally assorted uh, crimp connector set. So these are great for making those quick ground connections and um, like, uh, you know, connectors and all that, all that sort of stuff. Just a full kit, because you never know when you're gonna need it. Um, and when you do need it, it's nice to have it. So that I think is this complete drawer. I'll go ahead and clean that up, put everything back, I mean, and close this up. And there you go. I think that covers both of my entire toolboxes. It's a lot of tools, guys. Honestly, like hundreds, thousands of dollars, definitely, when you think about it. And uh, you know, some stuff breaks and you have to replace it sometimes, guys. That's, that's the honest truth of being a mechanic and working on your cars and using tools like these.
So I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some inspiration about different tools that you can buy and add to your garage to help you work on your BMW at home or whatever car it's gonna be because obviously tools are great for doing tons of different things. So like I said, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you love wrenching on BMWs. And as always, I hope everyone has an amazing day. We will see you next time. Oh,